Hi, this is Roger in Finland, and today we're going to go in depth with the picture profiles of the Zcam E2C. So, for the impatient ones, Rec 709 looks great out of camera given that you expose it and light it well. Zilog 2 is the one that will give you the most dynamic range and more room to work afterwards, but I find it a bit more difficult to create. Flat, it gives still a lot of dynamic range and it's pretty easy to create. Then, AGLG. It's going to be familiar to you and easy to work with if you're coming from, let's say, Sony HLG or Panasonic HLG as well. And then Concert, which I have no idea why it's in there. But now let's check this a bit more in detail. All these test shots were shot with, the, obviously, the Zcam E2C. The lens is the Make 25mm T2.2 and this was at T2.2. Actually, I was shooting at 4K 25p H265 into the SD card. The shutter speed is at 1 over 50. And then the ISO values, I was adjusting them in the different profiles to get the somewhat proper exposure, meaning that as pushed to the highlights as possible without clipping. And we have to talk about the ISO values because I found something a little bit surprising to me at least. But let's get to that a bit later. It's a bit tougher than I thought the shot actually. It's this exact same setup, but instead of using artificial lights, I was using only the window light. Despite the appearances, there's not that much contrast, and then there's some challenges with the colors. So all these whites behind me, so now they don't look white, but they are. They look a little bit different. Then there's the color of my skin, which I'm fairly pale, and I don't have exactly a pretty tone anyway. And then I had the red sweater with a really, really bright red, which tends to be a little bit challenging. And then after that, I just tried to grade them all so that they would look somewhat similarly, just using the Vinci Resolve tools and without spending too much time. So here what I was testing is which of the profiles is somewhat easy to work with, but still have some room to work. Then I made the second test, which is far from scientific, so please don't hold me accountable on that one, but I was shooting the x right um, passport video color checker card, and that one I had, um, I was lighting it with this aperture f7. Um, here I did use the custom white balance using also the same color chart. I had ISO at 800, T 5.6 ish, it was the same, make it 2.2 lens, uh, shutter at 1 over 50 or 180 degrees, 4K 25P X265 into the SD card as well. What I did was expose for Rec 709 so that the highlights would go as high as possible without clipping, and then I just changed to all the different profiles with exactly the same settings to see what kind of difference. And then for the grading, it's not for this to look pretty, so I just wanted to compare the different profiles, and what I did was basically spray the grayscale along the light spectrum, which means that there's going to be a lot of crushed blacks in the background, but I don't care, it's not the purpose of the test. Then I did adjust the hue so that the skin tones would be on the line of skin tones in the vertoscope, and then I did adjust the saturation and the hue of each of the six primaries, so the red, yellow, cyan, blue, magenta, green, and the other one, did I forget something? So that they would match basically the chip within the vector scope. I have the vector scope with a two time zoom, so I'm not saturating like crazy, but it allows me to put them in the correct place. Um, I had to adjust both hue of each of the color chips individually, and then the saturation to get them in the somewhat in the same level, and then we're gonna take a look at the differences. So let's start with Rec 709, which is one of the things that I've been reading quite a lot about this Zcam camera, that it basically looks great, and it does. I think it looks really good out of the camera, so if you want a really fast turnaround, it's a great profile. You will have to set the white balance carefully, expose carefully, and light carefully, because there's way less little room for adjusting in post, but that's the purpose of the profile. The sacrifice you do is dynamic range. Here, looking at the second test, the colors look fairly accurate and there was still a little bit of room to adjust if I needed to. So I think this is a really practical profile for fast turnaround. Now let's move on to Zilog 2, which is the profile that should have, based on what I've been reading and watching, the most dynamic range. And I think that it's true, obviously, looking at my very unscientific test of the exactly the same thing with the different profiles, by looking at the waveform and seeing that the actual waveform within that graph for this profile, it has it's the narrowest. That means in practice that you have more room both above and below to expose and get still more information. Everything which is under here, you could get still more information. And then if I change to Rec 709, which is the other extreme, obviously anything below this line would be crushed blocks. So 
a lot more dynamic range. What I found is that it's tricky to create quickly. Probably this is not the purpose. I know this is a cinema camera and this is the same Z-Log profile that it goes to the flagship cameras that professionals use, not people like me. But I wanted to try to see if it's possible to create quickly. It seems that using the Z-Log plugin, and I'm using the one for Resolve, the results is, are the best, but I just don't like using it. That's a personal preference. It reminds me a lot of Lightroom sliders, and I just don't like using them. I enjoy very much using all the different controls and setups that we have in DaVinci Resolve, and using those tools, I found Z-Log 2 a lot more difficult to create compared to the other profiles. One thing that was very easy with Z-Log 2 also, um, looking at the um, x test, was to match the colors to the markers. And I think that they were fairly accurate already, except the blue, which is always a little bit more difficult, but I'm gonna talk about more about that in the conclusions. The next is the flat profile. And once again, apologies for the unscientific test. I forgot the lab coat in my other pants. But if I compare the waveform of the flat with Zilog 2, they're fairly similar, but flat has a little bit less dynamic range. If I read the Redux book from Peter, it says that flat is pretty much Zilog 2 with Rec 709 baked into it. I'm not sure if I understand that because to me it looks very, very flat with a lot of room to work. So it looks to me like it's a different kind of implementation of a log profile. What I found is that it was easier to create using the normal Resolve tools for me compared to Zilla 2 while having fairly similar dynamic range. I'm sure that for professional use, maybe Zilla has some things that I don't know why they are benefits, but they are. But I think that flat is the one that I would be choosing over Zilog 2. And same thing in the flight profile using the extract test, it was easy to match the colors within the vectorscope. Next profile would be HLG. It has obviously more dynamic range than Rec 709. Same thing, let's look at the width of the or the spread of the graph within the waveform, but much less than flat or Zilog. Then the colors seem to have more room to work than Rec 709, obviously, but maybe a bit less than, than flat and Zilog 2. And that's probably why the name comes from. It's hybrid log gamma. I think that the gamma actually has a stronger component of, of the logarithmic compression, meaning the color information, and so less the luminance. This is my favorite profile to create in Sony APS-C cameras, the non-cinema ones with 8-bit codecs. And I like it quite very much also with the Panasonic G9, since I don't use VLOG in it. And because I've been using HLG in those two cameras for quite a while, I am fairly familiar with the creating process and it's quite similar when you try to create HLG within the Zcam. So that's a profile that I would probably be comfortable using, but the flight profile is giving me a lot more and it doesn't break down like S-Log2 and S-Log3 doing the 8-bit codec in the A6400, for instance. So I think I'm going to be choosing flat. And finally, we have something called Concert, which I did not find in Peter's book. Um, as a name, it sounds like an Instagram filter rather than a picture profile in this type of camera. So I don't know what to make of it. It very much looks like HLG and not done with exposure. So maybe that's that. I think that when I'm going to be putting the comparison between the different profiles, I might show a little bit what concert is and how it looks like next to the rest of them, both graded and ungraded. But mostly I'll be showing the comparison between Rex 9 Flat, Zilog 2 and HLG so that there is a bit more uh, image to look for you in the screen as well. If I need to put the five images, then everything is a bit too small. As I mentioned before, I think that we should talk about the ISO briefly. The test that I did was shooting myself with Zcam. As I mentioned before, there was not that much light. So I was just adjusting the ISO to get some quick tests. All of them ended up in this video today, by the way. And the surprise was that the ISO values of all these videos go from 6400 up to 12,800. And in a camera like this, they should not look good at all. Oh, that's what was my expectation. Rex 709 had ISO 6400, HLG of 10,000, same with Concert, and Flat and Zilog had ISO 12,800. I think that's really high. It looked very good to me. And this means several things. I'm gonna check my list. First of all, none of the dynamic French tests can be taken very seriously or in a scientific manner. Please don't, I didn't even pretend, because we know that the farther you go from the base ISO, the less dynamic range you have. Still, the comparison among profiles is valid. Then, one thing is that what the same thing that we saw with the G9 video that I made some time ago, exposing well is way more important than the ISO value, up to a certain point. 
And I just think I will have to make a separate video talking about high ASO in this camera. So I'm gonna save some of this rant for that point. So what other general findings do I have after doing this test and taking a look at them? Um, other than the obvious dynamic range differences, then there's the colors themselves within the different profiles. One thing to remember is that when you're adjusting red, that will affect always skin tones. When adjusting yellow and magenta will also affect skin tones, but much less so. So in profiles that there is more room to create, adjusting yellow and magenta, it's maybe a little bit easier, more possible. In profiles like Rec. 7 Online, any adjustments will have a bigger impact in the skin tone. Then blue seems to be the problematic color for the Zika Me 2 c at least for this one. With setting correctly the white balance in the camera, the adjustment of moving the skin tones and most of the colors in the correct uh, chip within the vectorscope was fairly easy, but blue was always out of it. Blue was always the one that required the most adjustment. I don't know how common that is with other cameras or if it's just a Zcam thing, but something to take into account. I've seen some videos, I'm gonna put the link down below and a card here as well, of a guy that makes awesome videos with the Zcam, mostly outdoors, mostly really blue skies, which are beautifully shot, which means that obviously you can do really beautiful blues, but for me, it was more difficult to nail everything, including the blue. Another thing is that even if the vector scopes look fairly similar through all the different profiles, and I did some adjustment on the exposure so that the waveform looked somewhat similar, and forgive me for not spending hours and hours and hours like matching them very correctly, there's still some differences, especially in the blue color, even if it's in the correct place in the vector scope. And that's a bit surprising to me. Of course, it might be a problem of my very much uncalibrated monitors. So what are the conclusions? It's pretty much what I said to the impatient ones. So thank you for making it here, if you did. For fast turnaround, expose well, light well, Rec. 709. To have room to create, if you want to use Resolve tools, I think the flat is the best. If you want to use the Zilloc plugin, uh, either for Premiere or, or Resolve, and you like to use that one, I think that you're going to get awesome results with Zilloc too, and just not for me. And then if you want to work in HLG, because you're very much used through either other cameras that have used HLG, it's a good profile. And then for some reason, there's concert. I hope you liked this video, you find it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and we're gonna see you soon for some more content.